1 to 5. You will see there is an example that has been done for you. On this occasion only, the conversation relating to this will be played first. Oh, hi, Anna. How's it going? I haven't seen you since graduation. Hi, Bradley. Things are great. I've been traveling around Europe for the last month, but now that I'm back, I really need to find a job so I can start renting my own place. Yeah, me too. My mum's driving me crazy. I've got an interview on Thursday at a company called Power. I'm pretty nervous. Don't worry. I'm sure you'll do great. Bradley has got an interview at a manufacturing company called Power. So, power has been written in the space. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen, because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions 1 to 5. Oh, hi, Anna. How's it going? I haven't seen you since graduation. Hi, Bradley. Things are great. I've been traveling around Europe for the last month, but now that I'm back, I really need to find a job so I can start renting my own place. Yeah, me too. My mum's driving me crazy. I've got an interview on Thursday at a company called Power. I'm pretty nervous. Don't worry. I'm sure you'll do great. Do you know what the job involves? Well, the company has many sections like sourcing materials and taking care of waste management. But I'm interviewing for a job in the warehouse section. Wow, I bet that will be really interesting. You should apply too. They still have a couple of jobs left. I found the job I'm interviewing for on their website. The reference is SW35FT. Thanks, Bradley. That's really nice of you. I'll apply later today. Is there a contact I could ask for? The manager is Susan Thatcher, but you should contact her personal assistant. Her name is Jane Hitcher. How do you spell the surname for me, please? Yes, it's H-I-T-C-H-E-R. Okay, great. I actually found a job listing for a place at Cotton, but the work hours don't suit me. You should look into it. Ah. That's the grocery company, right? I heard that the jobs in their distribution office are really well paid. The advertisement I saw was looking for people to work in the supermarket office, but the pay still looked very good. Was there a description of the job? The company is looking to increase their production of cakes and pastries, so you would be working as a cook in the bakery. After a month, they evaluate your performance, and there's potentially an opportunity for promotion to a management position. That sounds like a great opportunity. I'll definitely look into it. Do you have the reference number? I'll write it down in my notebook. Sure. I also have the reference for a job at the art museum. I'll give you the reference for that first. It's SGH667. Great. That's really near my house. And what's the reference number for the bakery job at Cotton? The reference is ARW204. I'll send them my application this afternoon. Who's the contact? The name on the advert was Melanie, but it specifically said not to contact her in person. You should use the office as your contact, so just post your application there directly. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 6 to 10.
Now listen and answer questions 6 to 10. You seem to have found way more job listings than I have. Where are you finding them all? At first I was keeping an eye out for listings on the internet, but all of the jobs listed there were in the city. I found that the best place to find local jobs was in magazine adverts. Adverts? You know, the section at the back of Job Plus magazine. Where can I buy that? You don't buy it. It's a free magazine. Just go to your nearest corner shop and buy the newspaper. The magazine comes with it. Oh, I never realized. My mum buys the newspaper every week, so there's probably a copy lying around at home somewhere. I'll have a look for it when I get back. All this job hunting is so stressful and time-consuming. I can't wait until it's over either. I'm so tempted just to pay someone to do all this for me. What do you mean? I could go to a recruitment seminar or to an agency. The agency sounds like a great idea. They charge a fee before taking you on as a client, though. Plus, only large corporations hire new employees through an agency. Well, I think it would be exciting. If you decide to go to an agency, make sure you take your student card with you. Your student status is valid for another month, and agencies often give students a 10% discount. OK, great. I'll remember that. All of the placements I've applied to require a referee. I've never had a job before, so I don't know who to ask. Who did you use? I had a summer job working as a waitress, so I asked my old boss. I got on with him really well, so I trusted him to give me a good reference. If you haven't had a job before, you should ask one of your tutors. That's a really good idea. I used to really enjoy my history classes with Mr. Fredericks. Perhaps I'll ask him. I miss being a student. I don't feel mature enough to be earning money and finding a place of my own. Yeah, university was great. Have you heard about their summer program? I'm thinking of applying for the art course. That sounds like fun. Do you have to pay? No, the tutors are running it as a research project. You just need to fill out a feedback form at the end. Great. Well, I'll see you there. Good luck with your job hunting. Thanks. Good luck to you, too. See you soon. Bye. That is the end of Section 1. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section 2. Section 2. You will hear part of a talk given by a director of a museum. First, you'll have some time to look at questions 11 to 15. Listen carefully and answer questions 11 to 15. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Silence, please. We are now ready to start the meeting. I have called this meeting to discuss city museum matters, as there have been a number of changes made, and I want to ensure that you are all fully informed. There will be time for questions at the end, so please don't interrupt until I'm finished. Now that the formalities are out of the way, let's begin. Firstly, some rumours have been brought to my attention that our regular receptionist, Jane, has been fired for her inexperience. This is untrue, 
and I want to set the record straight. Jane has had to take sick leave because she is ill. David is temporarily taking Jane's place at reception. He is also continuing his work as a security guard, so please be considerate, as he is quite busy. Second on the agenda is the matter of the new Egyptian display at the museum. A very generous benefactor, who wishes to remain anonymous, has donated a large collection of Egyptian tombs and mummies to improve our display. As we have a surplus of staff, I see no need to hire extra employees to monitor this new display, which means that you will have the exciting opportunity of taking on this responsibility. Any volunteers can put their names forward after the meeting. Thanks to a number of generous donations last year, the museum is certainly not suffering from a lack of money. I do, however, feel that we are short of publicity, so I'm hiring a new public relations team, which will hopefully be able to attract more new visitors to come and view our magnificent displays. I now have a serious matter to address. As you are all aware, a priceless statue was stolen from the museum last week during our annual open night. The police questioned everyone at the scene, and they've provided us with a report on how the thieves were able to get past our security precautions. All of the items in our displays are listed in our brochure and on our website, which is a very valuable resource for the public. The security guards at this site are very well trained, but the online information meant that the thieves were able to steal the statue because they knew what they were looking for. We have also looked at our security system to see if it can be upgraded. However, we have been told that it will not be outdated for another five years. It has been suggested by the police that we hire more guards. However, I do not believe this would be the right approach. We would run the danger of having too much security, which would intimidate visitors and cause them to feel unsafe. Instead, I feel that we should buy some new closed-circuit television cameras so that we can monitor every part of the gallery without disturbing our visitors. Another benefit of this system is that there is no need to buy any more computers to display the camera feed, as we already have some spares in our store. Now let's move on to other matters. We have expanded our supply of books at the library and are therefore looking to hire a new member of staff. This job role does not carry many responsibilities, but our new librarian should have worked in a library. In other words, they should be experienced. We welcome young applicants who are interested in becoming highly trained in the art of book preservation. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 16 to 20. Now listen and answer questions 16 to 20. As the final matter for today's meeting, I am delighted to show you the plans for our proposed new extension to the reception area. Please turn your attention to the plan in front of you. If you enter through the entrance doors and go around the sharp corner, you will find on your left the new box office. From this position, the box office manager can both sell tickets and ensure that no visitors are able to enter the museum without paying. From here, if you walk towards the door on the far left wall, you will come across our new children's room, where visitors can leave their children to play whilst they explore our displays. Directly to the right of the children's room is where we originally intended to locate the cafe, but we felt that it would be better placed in the bottom right corner of the plan where we can create a more intimate atmosphere. Due to generous donations, we now have the available funds to build a fantastic new multimedia room where visitors will have access to computers, cameras and TVs. This exciting new space will be in the top right corner where it is safely away from the entrance doors. 
Finally, the showroom will be built in the top left corner, directly opposite the new multimedia room. I hope that you are all as excited about this new space as I am. And now that I am finished, I would be happy to answer any questions. That is the end of section two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section 3. The two students called Tom and Bella attending the third meeting of the after-school club. They are talking with their professor about the furniture company. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 26. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 26. Before we start, Tom and Bella, thanks for coming in today to talk about the key case studies that will help you to understand your classwork better. Now, I hope you've read the notes I gave you last week on the furniture company Willows, as this will be the focus of our discussion today. Let's begin. Who can tell me what the current focus of the company's business is? The company used to be very large, with many retail outlets across the country. However, since the recession, there have been fewer people spending money on furniture, and so the company was forced to close all of its outlets, and now only operates online. Well done, Tom. Bella, can you add anything? Willows used to produce a very large number of products, such as tables, chairs, and light fittings. However, through market research, they realized that most of their profit was made from the sale of bookcases, so they now specialize in this one product. Very good. Does anyone know how our department began its contact with Willows? Did you contact the company, Professor? No, Tom, it wasn't through me. Our headmaster saw an article that the manager had written in the newspaper and became very interested in the company. He contacted Willows and arranged for a student to work there full-time during the summer. Yes, exactly. Does anyone know what the student thought of their time working at Willows? Yes, he is a friend of ours. He worked as a member of the design team, creating technical drawings of the furniture using a computer. There was a special software that he used, which he said had a bad interface and was very difficult to predict. However, it was very efficient and helpful for quickly drawing up furniture designs. How interesting! Yes, it was. We both visited him whilst he was working there, and he showed us around. Unfortunately, visitors were not allowed to access the IT department, but it was great to chat with his colleagues. Did you meet his manager? His manager is a very busy man, so he didn't have time to meet with us. However, we were allowed to inspect the accounts, which really helped us to understand the effects of the software on the company. Well, what an exciting experience. Now, before I forget, next week I'll be conducting face-to-face -face interviews with each of you to prepare for job interviews. Can we do it as a group? I'm afraid not, Bella. I want to give each of you my undivided attention, and there will be too much disturbance if I interview you all together. Plus, it will be more realistic if I interview you alone. Have you finished writing the feedback on our exam results, Professor? Yes, I have, Tom. And I must say that I was not disappointed. I am glad to say that your performance has dramatically increased since you began attending this after-school club, and you have both scored above the average. 
If you continue to work hard, your results should soon improve significantly. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 27 to 30. Now, listen and answer questions 27 to 30. Now, back to our discussion about willows. Can anyone tell me what business decisions might benefit the company? A new system would definitely benefit willows. Their system is very outdated. I don't think it would help them to gain more profit. However, the system is capable of doing the work of hundreds of people. This would, therefore, significantly lower labor costs. I agree. Unfortunately, unless they also replace the machinery in their workshop, the new system won't reduce the production time. That is a shame. If they can't reduce their production time, they won't be able to increase sales. The answer is to hire more staff in order to increase the efficiency of the production line. Yes, you have both made interesting points. Now for one final question before we finish this week's session. How will new clients be affected by the new system? Unfortunately, the new system does not allow clients to connect to the Willow system from home, so they are unable to access their work online. This also means that the system presents no opportunity to attract more contacts, since clients are unable to view it from their homes. Yes, that's true. However, it could definitely benefit clients who visit the showroom. The system is very interactive and allows clients to easily browse the furniture catalog, which will save them a lot of time. It's a shame that staff are still needed to guide clients through the online system, as it means that no savings can be made in labor costs. I think the major benefit of the new system is that it enables staff to design the furniture in front of the client which allows them to get a lot more involved in the design. Bravo! You've both contributed fantastic points to our conversation. That concludes our session for today. I'll see you next week. That is the end of Section 3. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section 4. We'll hear a talk on a survey on improving the local hospital service. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. Good morning. Today, I'd like to discuss the results of our patient survey. 
We have reviewed the data collected in order to measure the strengths and weaknesses of our hospital and to determine potential future plans for improvement. The first question on the survey attempted to determine the main reason that patients choose to come to our hospital for treatment rather than others in the vicinity. The data showed that even though our hospital is not as centrally located as others, we offer a very good transportation service that enables patients to travel here by bus or train free of charge. Despite there being other hospitals that are larger with more facilities than ours, we still have higher patient numbers. The second question on the survey asked what quality patients hoped for most when visiting the hospital. There were five choice options including short waiting times and friendly service from nurses. However, the data collected showed that most patients hoped that the hospital is clean when they visit it. It seemed that patients were not concerned with the clarity of signs and notices in the hospital, as this option got the smallest number of votes. They were, however, very keen to be given prior information by the staff about hospital treatments. Using the data collected from our survey, we have developed a list of actions that will be adopted within the next year. A main focus of these improvements is our website, which is currently very outdated. We will not only update our in-hospital service for the use of the medical staff, but also our main service so that local residents can also benefit from it. We hope that this new service will attract a large number of new patients. It is clear from the feedback that many members of staff are unhelpful towards patients and inefficient when carrying out their tasks. We feel that some incentive is needed to boost motivation to perform better, and so we are implementing a system whereby staff will be awarded an extra bonus for their success. The member of staff who has received the most bonuses at the end of the year will be announced as Staff Member of the Year. We will continue to monitor progress on this issue through patient feedback forms so that the opinions of our visitors will constantly be taken into consideration. Another issue that the survey has brought to light is the long delays experienced by visitors awaiting treatment, with some visitors reporting waiting times of up to five hours. This is unacceptable. We need to improve the effectiveness of communication between patients, doctors and staff, so we have decided to implement a ticketing system. This means that patients are seen on a first-come, first-served basis and will never have to wait more than two hours to be seen by a doctor. The final topic that I want to cover in the lecture is the recommendations that we have put forward for future improvements to the hospital. Firstly, we intend to be the first hospital in the country to build a new unit for those suffering from sleep disturbance, which is a relatively common illness affecting up to 6% of the population. Whilst we are a hospital primarily treating patients with illnesses and injuries, we cannot ignore the significant income that those in need of plastic surgery could bring to the hospital. We will, therefore, also be proposing a new ward to give patients access to this increasingly popular treatment. After much discussion about the quality and suitability of our equipment, we have decided that it is advanced enough to cope with the treatments that we offer and that our spending should be directed to other areas where it will have a more significant impact. We feel that more effective planning is needed to improve the efficiency of the forms of communication that patients have with us. Therefore, patients who have received treatment will receive an email link to a survey that they can fill out online. This will eradicate meaningless paperwork and will also enable us to digitally monitor the data collected. Now, if anyone has any questions... That is the end of Section 4. 
You now have half a minute to check your answers. That is the...